begin. I want to talk about Dennis, but first, I need to talk about this phone call that I got from my dad the other night. So I was sitting in the backyard the other night in the Hudson Valley. That's where I live. And I was sipping on some bourbon. Neat. This ain't always everyone's idea of heaven, but it's the heaven I got. My phone vibrates. It's a missed call from my dad. Always alerts me a little. He doesn't often call just to chat. His voicemail asks for me to call him back as soon as I can. He has a quick question. Well, Dad, consider the hook baited. So I called my dad back. He's also sipping on some bourbon. We start to shoot the shit, talking about different bourbons we've tried lately and how everyone experiences it differently. This leads to a less than perfectly scientific discussion about taste buds and this idea of flavor memories. Huh, flavor memories. I like this idea. Flavor as a vessel for nostalgia. Why do we connect flavors with moments in our life? What creates these so-called flavor memories? Now, I don't want to pretend that we have some deep scientific understanding. I mean, this is just a father and a son talking about bourbon together. But let's dream for a second. Bourbon hits the tongue, and there's an ancestral connection to life before our time. Our taste buds have receptors made from certain proteins, and these allow us to pick up certain flavors. These proteins were created by ancient genes, and I'm not talking about the acid-washed ones that my dad wears on the weekends. I'm talking about genes with a capital G. Genes have survived a very long trip, and much like bourbon, they come with a message from another time. Okay, this is where it gets a little bit nerdy, but stick with me. According to a study done at Berkeley, Scientists aren't sure why natural selection kept so many of the genes around and functioning, but some think that having many of these genes may allow us to sense and avoid a variety of different toxic compounds in our environments. These genes are the result of an ancient case of duplication and divergence that occurred more than 400 million years ago, before any vertebrae set foot on dry land. In layman's terms, and let me be clear, I am definitely a layman, Natural selection, for a variety of reasons beyond my very limited understanding, has allowed us, humans, the good fortune of a lot of well-preserved ancestral genes that faithfully maintained our good sense of sweet, salty, sour, a little bitter, and umami. In short, evolution allowed a roadmap for bourbon tasting. So, I sip. And I think about Dennis. At the spry age of 80, Dennis Bayless, father to my father, my grandfather, has not lost his wit. A while back, we were together at our family cabin, one on the property that my great-grandparents first established in the 1940s, for a family they didn't quite know yet, but could feel coming. I asked my grandfather what it was like to be born during World War II, and what his favorite year of life was. He finished his sip of bourbon, and with a straight face, said, if I told you, you'd never forgive me. <laughs> His humor and spirit are the tree from which I'm happy to be a falling apple. As I hurtle towards middle age, and believe me, it hurts, I recognize the gift that is being able to spend time with my grandfather. I'm a beaver, you're a beaver, we are beavers all. When we get together, we give the beaver call. He shows his age at times, having had a few health scares over the last few years. But he remains one of the strongest-willed, quietly intelligent humans I know. I feel so deeply connected to him, as the firstborn grandson spoiled by his enthusiasm for my emerging creative side as a child, and honestly my willingness to be playful into adulthood. I've always looked at our relationship as having this invisible thread that ties our spirits together, both in this life and perhaps and a few glasses of the good stuff. Now my grandpa grew up in a time where bourbon was in slow decline, and having worked in the publishing and printing industry in Chicago in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, he was always keenly aware of these sort of shifts in the American spirit. When we were kids, we'd visit his house in Wisconsin, which was set back on a channel off of a lake. At night, we'd go on cocktail cruises. The adults would have a cocktail, 
while the kids sipped on Shirley Temples. My dad drank Jack and Coke. One of the few times I'd actually seen him drink any booze during my childhood. The memories of getting sleepy to the sounds of the pontoon hum and the gentle waves just sort of bouncing us around, wrapped up in a towel with my head on my mother's lap, are some of the warmest memories of my life. My grandfather once said, whiskey makes you want to look back, but you forget what you see. I feel like that simple line captures so much about why I love telling stories about bourbon. We want to look back and remember. This is how we connect not only with one another, but with our broader selves. These are the good times. I love to get together with my dad and my brothers, with all our unique ways of looking at the world and making it through our lives, communing with one another, like the deacons of a whiskey church. This family foundation is strong enough to withstand our various positions on not only the booze we consume, but the hills we're willing to die on. Metaphorically, of course. When we get just saucy enough to see the world through the poetic haze of high-proof brown stuff, I love to look around the room and acknowledge the bond that we've created and how it runs deep. And even as we all deal with the collective trauma that has been these last few years, and honestly, whatever the hell is still to come, we are here. I remember the present. And bourbon whiskey is our guide through the darkness. This is what it's all about since all of time. An exploration of spirit and of soul. We're lucky to drink America's spirit and damn, some of the best juice in the world is produced in America. Yes, we leave each year hopeful and enter each new one like it's a mystery novel on a shelf just above Pappy Van Winkle. But I, for one, know that as a spirit Joel seeker, I am certain to find my way from darkness towards the bar room, one glass at a time. Why do I drink whiskey? Because it's a poem in a glass. It's a poem without an ending. It's, it's just a poem. It's a whole universe. We are all on a voyage towards enlightenment. For some of us, this is a maiden voyage. And for others, we've crossed the hemispheres and many vessels over many years. What have the favorite years of my life been? If I told you, you'd never forgive me. To drink is to live.